name is Willie Jones. The Safe Surrender program is on its way back September the 10th, the 17th to 24th. If you got a want, come on down. It's a great program. It's the first step for a new beginning. Do the right thing right now. I did. Hey, listen, I ain't where I want to be, but I sure ain't where I used to be. Thank you.
in 2000 in, I want to say 2007, I was using heroin, using crack cocaine, alcohol, anything that would change my mood. I was at home one day and my phone rang. It was my brother, Carl Jones. He called me, he said, hey man, it's a program that's coming out that can help you get your life together. And lo and behold, it come across the screen. Safe Surrender Program, turn yourself in November the 1st, 2nd, and 3rd down at Bible Way Church. Mm -hmm. So I get on the phone, I call my lawyer. I said, hey, is this program true or is it something just to get you down there and they lock you up? He did a research. He got back with me. He said, Mr. Jones, this program is for real. Mm -hmm. So right after then, I called one of my sisters, Tammy Watts Jones. She came and I told her, it's a program going on called Safe Surrender and I'm going to get my life together. So she said, what do you want me to do? And this is what I told her. I want you to buy me some heroin for the last time. And I want you to get me two bars of methadone. Mm -hmm. She said, where you get that? I said, I'm going to buy it in the street. Mm -hmm. And I did. That was 2007. And now it's 2016. I ain't found it necessary to use no more. So what was, what was your warrant? What it was, was for fail to appear. Mm -hmm. And I had a charge uh distribution of her okay. yes and <clears throat> so between i mean from age 14 to and how, how many years do you think you spent in jail yeah. or in but the street how many times were you incarcerated if you think about that uh okay. i say at least a good <laughs> six parole violations then i caught a new charge in 2007 and they gave me two years probation. Mm -hmm. And I got my job at DOS, where I work at now, mm -hmm. the Office of Workers' Conversation. Mm -hmm. And then in 2000, my mother died in 2011, mm -hmm. the worst day of my life. Mm -hmm. And me and my brother used to go down and visit my mother and we didn't have any headstones for my mother. And I was still working, but I wasn't making, I thank God for the money I was making. Right. I wasn't making good money. I was a grade four in the government. Right. Mm -hmm. So me coming up with a great idea, I started back dealing heroin. Mm -hmm. Okay, lo and behold, I had a guy that I was dealing with that I thought was my friend. I went to meet him in 2013, February the 2nd. When I got there, the police was waiting just as well as he was. Now, did he tell on me? I don't know. We're not even gonna get into all that. But I wound up going to jail in 2014. The judge gave me 180 days. Now, remind you, July, no, June 29th, 2014, I just got permit on my job, mm -hmm. June 29th. Mm -hmm. I go to jail July the 7th. Had resigned from the government, lost my good government job. Went to jail, came home in January. And God is great and God is good. And got my job back. And I'm back to work. I've been back to work now since Came home in January 2015. I got back to work April the 20th, 2015. Mm -hmm. Been back ever since. Um, I mean, what was your worst fear uh, about? Say surrender? Yeah, about say surrender. Going down there and going to jail. Mm -hmm. That was my worst fear. Mm -hmm. But once I talked to my attorney, and he said he got in touch with someone in Indianapolis. That's where the program it came from. Mm -hmm. And it was a great program, and it was a true program. Mm -hmm. So after that, I just went and did what I had to do. So what did you have to do? How does it work? So you well, showed up at 4 o'clock. I showed up at 4 o'clock, faced the judge, 
within an hour, the warrant was squashed. Mm -hmm. I had a new court date, and I was back in the street, and I ain't had to look over my shoulder. Um. So, I mean, did he ask questions? Yeah, he, he asked, asked me. Questions? No, he just he just he, he just said. And you don't just show up and say because you show up. Okay. No, he asked question. me. Uh, when was my original court date? Mm -hmm. Uh, why I didn't show up, and I told him that I had a fear, I didn't want to go to jail. And his name was Judge Rufus King. He was the chief judge. Yeah, and he just said, Mr. Jones, you know, I'm going to get rid of the warrant, set you a new court date. And that's what he did. Okay. So you, so that's what it is, they get rid of the warrant. Right. And you have more than one? No, I had one warrant. Okay. But they, they get rid of the warrant, mm -hmm. and they place you right back where you was. And this year, they call it the first step for a second chance. Okay, now if you come down there and you badly beat up from the streets and the drugs, they'll put you in an inpatient program 30, 60 days, mm -hmm. and then put you right back where you was on parole. Mm -hmm. yeah. And they got, they got, I think they got like 2,000 warrants for traffic, parole violations, failure to appear. It's for only people that have non-violent warrants. Mm -hmm. You can't have armed robbery. I mean, you can turn yourself in. I'm not telling you not to come. Mm -hmm. But if you come, <laughs> you're going to jail. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's basically for people with non-violent warrants. Mm -hmm. When you're um, trying to live a normal life, knowing you've got this kind of monkey on your shoulder, this warrant, you know, that's, I mean, does that, how does it feel to know that that's trailing you? You know, you, because evidently you went down and you wanted to get that thing quashed, squ quashed, as you said. But I mean, just living life knowing that there's a warrant for you, how does, how does it, how do you manage day to day? Is that a nagging thing or you just don't pay attention to it? Nagging stagnated, can't really go nowhere. I mean, because you're afraid the police gonna stop you. And once they stop you and run your name, you're going to jail. And especially with a heroin charge, carrying what? Someone carries zero to 30 years. And you, it, it's very, very difficult. You know, it's the best thing ever happened is safe surrender program for me. Mm -hmm. That turned my life around 100%. And it's a very good program, and I recommend anybody that's listening or looking, if you got a warrant, come on down September the 10th, the 17th, and the 24th. That's if you want the first chance, the first step for a second chance to get your life together. It worked for me. I've, I've been clean now, doing the right thing since 2007, other than when I tried to make some changes on my own instead of trusting God and moving forward. But uh, I realized that you can go to jail clean too. I hear people say that all the time, and that's true. Mm -hmm. But yeah, with a warrant hanging over you, it's, it's hard. It really is. If anybody tell you it's not because when you're at home and a bang come on your door, you jumping because you don't know, you're thinking it's the police. You can't drive because they pull you over. Once they run your name, they see you got a warrant, you're going to jail. So it, 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 it is a very uh, difficult position to be in, and I don't want to see nobody in that position. So like I said, if anybody got a warrant, those are the best days to come on down. And were there any places, or I mean, how did it restrict your movement? I mean, were you, for example, you knew I mean, you didn't go to places that you once went to, or how did it restrict your movement? Yeah, I couldn't go, like, when I was on the run, I was on heroin. So it was hard for me to go into a drug area to get my heroin. I couldn't get a job because as soon as I go look for a job, some places run your uh, background check. And once that pop up, you got a warrant. You ain't gonna get no job, you don't get nothing done. It's just a, a bad situation to, to be in, but normally, People like me, we put ourselves in those positions. So this is a good opportunity to get your life together.
the program will work mm -hmm. if you work it. If you want better things in life and you want to get this off you and get your job and live a normal life, this is the time to do it. I did it and it worked. If you could describe the feeling once that warrant, I mean, I'm sure you've had great feelings all along, you got you know, clean, all that. But if you could describe, maybe even a word, you know, the feeling that you had once that warrant was washed, what, what would that word be? Awesome. It's an awesome feeling to have that warrant off you. And you could just, I mean, it's just like being free. When you got a want, you stuck. Ain't but so much you can do. Ain't but so far you can go. It, it, I mean, it's just like being on parole. I mean, like right now, I, I had two years special probation. I can't go further than Ocean City without calling my parole officer, probation officer, parole officer, whatever you want to call it, and giving her the tag number on the vehicle I'm in where I'm going to stay at, the hotel, how long I'm going to stay. I mean, normal people don't want to live like that. Mm -hmm. You know, I want to be able to get up and go to Florida today if I want to. I can't. Anything I do, I got to go through my PO, my probation officer, whatever you want to call it. Mm -hmm. But it's the probation officer. And whatever I do, I got to go through her. And how long was you have to for two years mm -hmm. and things are, have changed because I can recall one time when you was on probation or parole you didn't have to pay now you gotta pay I gotta pay to take you on yeah yeah I, I paid for the first year $750 for visits and units now I get off January 2017, which is next year, I got to pay another $750 before I get off. That's for the two years, $1,500. Mm -hmm. yeah. So what happens if you can't? Well. I mean, you have a job, so you yeah, know, well, it helps. You, yeah, well, if you can't pay, they say that, uh, let me say this. They say you got to pay. I told a lady one time I ain't have a job. She said, that ain't my problem. Mr. Joe, because when I first came home, I didn't have no job. And she brought this to my attention that you had to pay this money. And she was like, Mr. Jones, and, you know, that ain't my problem. And also one day she told me, she said, I looked at your record. You were selling drugs for a long time, not had no money. You know, that's just the way they think, mm -hmm. you know. But yeah, the things have really changed in the system. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, um, what do you do? What's your position now? I know you work with the OES. I'm a claims clerk. A claims clerk? Yes, ma'am. And so, um, so now you know, when you're talking about you can't do anything when you got this warrant, and a lot of folks out there don't have jobs. It's almost like the people we were talking about with the explosion, how they're sort of staying away yes. from things. They complaining that they don't have jobs, but then they can't get jobs because they have these warrants. So again, I mean, if you could just really, particularly young people, I mean, this qualifies for, I mean, could you be 14 years old? And turn yourself in for a warrant? Yeah. I'm quite sure you can. If you got a warrant, you're 14, yeah, you can turn yourself in. Okay. Yeah, you should be able to. Okay. And then see where I work. They got a very good program down there called Project Empowerment. Mm -hmm. And it's for people, it first started off with welfare to work, then it went to people that was, uh, convicts, inmates, whatever you want to call them, mm -hmm. and now it's for anyone, mm -hmm. you know, so that's that's a great program to give you a start if you got a warrant and you're really trying to do something, you come down to DOS and sign up for Project Empowerment, I think you go there for three weeks after that, they, they place you on a, uh, on a job. I would like for anybody that really want to do something with their life and got warrants and stuff or, you know, to grab hold to this while it's going on and get your uh, get your life together. Because I'll tell people like this, I ain't where I want to be, but I sure ain't where I used to be. <laughs> you know? So it's nothing to be afraid of. I hear people say all the time, man, I'm coming down there, I might go to jail. If you come down there and you got a non-violent warrant, I guarantee you going home the same day. 
they got flyers out saying now that 98% of the people go home the same day. You know. What well, happens to the other 2%? If some of them go to jail, like if they come down there with a, a violent oh. warrant, mm -hmm. but it's still a help. It still will help because you got the warrant off you, and they take that in consideration. I was told by one of the staff members, they take that in consideration of you just turning yourself in. But you may not go home the same day. I'm quite sure you won't, but it will help also. Mm 